United is playing Everton over the weekend at Old Trafford. It's going to be a Saturday and some huge news is going to have to be broken that maybe Rasmus Hoyland will expe is expected to make his return on the side of Marina to lead the line. Welcome to the United Matters channel. Champions League football is really going on. Bayern in the lead. PSG in the lead. Looks like these two teams are going to make it to the round of eight. That is the quarterfinal. Smash like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name. You can as well call me Aradi. Diego Dal has gone ahead and spoken about his role at Man United and what his fellow players are supposed to do to obviously lift the name of Man United high, high in the sky. And the left back, the young sensational left back, that's going to hit obviously see everyone speaking a lot. That is Amaz returns back from injury you never know he would have gone ahead to find himself in a position really getting into the squad of man united if he wasn't injured because we're really having severe problems at the club of man united to the left back position now let's see close to 200 likes much in this video don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily rock and david is my name and hope you guys are really doing fine where you are the muslims barak laufikum have been told that it's like eight days from the start of the fasting period of the Muslims. And we just can't wait to see how things are really going to unfold in there for you. So let's obviously start it off with a story coming in through from United Insider. Confirming to us that Rasmus Hoyland is being looked at this week for a possible return against Everton on Saturday. Rasmus Hoyland has been out ever since he really went ahead to score against Luton Town and we expected him to obviously be part of the United side that went ahead to play Fulham. If you told me that of the two games against Man City and against Fulham, where would you love to see Rasmus Hoyland really represent for the club of Man United? I would tell you Fulham because that was a game that he only needed to be there for like 60 minutes and then would have gone ahead obviously to either give us an assist or really get us goals and then kill off that game but we really lacked what we call the center forward presency into that beautiful game of football and it's sort of it that we never really looked the same when that guy is out you know you'd rather really be having looks your out lisandro martin is out but have a focal presency but the focal presency was really lacked in this mood and when you look at Rasmus Hoyland he had been really pivotal in the season of Man United. Having gone ahead to be criticized a lot for not scoring the Premier League he went ahead to really bag in his first Premier League goal when you're playing against Aston Villa. After scoring against Aston Villa he missed out on the game that we played away at Nottingham Forest where we lost by two goals to one. Then ever since return to playing the Premier League you know against Wolverhampton Wanderers he scored against Tottenham Hotspur, he scored against, um, <coughs> against West Ham, he scored against Luton Town, he scored against Aston Villa, he went ahead to really score, and at Luton Town he went ahead to square breast, and he went ahead to score in six consecutive Premier League games, that is Rasmus Hoyland for you, so ever since he really went ahead to score goals for the side of Aston Villa, sorry for the side of Man United, he never really stopped. That is Rasmus Hoyland for you. And he kept himself up and running and really put in a lot of shifts. Now, we've been missing him a lot. That is it. I told you in the game of Man City, if I told you remember that that ball that Rashford was really got almost just how many few yards from the center half when Bruno released him that, that is the signature goal of Rasmus Hoyland. And if that was Rasmus Hoyland, you would have gone ahead to see to it that he bags that ball into the back of the net because this guy wouldn't have gone ahead to even find him. Um, Kyle Walker, however much Kyle Walker is said to be the fastest uh, defender in the Premier League, but if Rasmus Hoyland was into that moment, he wouldn't have gone ahead to obviously find him. He would have gone ahead to really find it hard to really level up onto his pace because he's good on really dribbling the ball at a very fast rate. One of those that I've gonna hit obviously round off goalkeepers with um, with precision and he has gonna hit to do what we call surgical precision finishes in his career. That is Rasmus Whelan. So it will be good news for the club of Man United to see him return. And if you're Manchester United, this is what you would love to see him be here for the last eleven games of the season. That he keeps himself fit. Can he really go eleven games? You know, without being injured. And as I told you, Anton Martial will be returning. I think mid-April such that he comes in through and really help us you know 
coming through to play some minutes when this guy is really rested because you see to it that he presses a lot he uses a lot of energy and he's not rested and he's still young he came in through without doing a proper preseason. he really had a back injury he was going to have a thigh injury and now he's really having another knock that has been battling very sorry after the game of luton town where i went ahead to small breast tenha came out and really told us in the press conference on friday when you're going to play against uh fulham that rasmus hoyland is really injured and is going to be out for two to three weeks if you count those it's really going to be two to three weeks and i think now eric ten Hag has nothing to do because he needs to continue winning i've gonna hate to see very many rumors put outside there ten Hag's future is really hanging in balance the owners of the club of Marine united can't even consider sucking him now if they never considered sucking him you know when he really went ahead to lose three games in a row and i remember we lost three in a row we lost in the champions league we lost everywhere but the club stood with him now who is going to suck him i just want to really come out and really teach some people on what they really come out and say because certain things that are being said by these people are really unbacked with what we call statutory evidence so ten hag just feels like he needs to get Rasmus Hoyland back because Rashford has shown us that he cannot fill the line and he cannot really help us really become a better team in transition when he's leading the line. But when you're really having Rasmus Hoyland, it's the opposite. He gives you what we call the focal presency and he really buries every ball that you obviously get him into the back of the net that is rasmus Hoyland for you having gone ahead to take 1000 minutes without really scoring in the premier league when he started he has not yet seized and if he comes back against everton and really scores he would have gone ahead to score in seven consecutive premier league matches something that a player of his age has not gone ahead to make and the record he went ahead to break was that of joe willock when joe willock went ahead to score five goals in five consecutive premier league games and then rasmus Hoyland has come in through and really made it six in six consecutive Premier League games, and that is the beauty of Rasmus Hoyland. So history is with him, and the reason as why I want him to return is we haven't lost a game this season where that three has gone ahead to start. Rashford, Ganacho, and Rasmus Hoyland. All those three on the field of play, Man United has not gone ahead to lose a game. So that is the beauty of really having those two because of having those three because they really take United to the next level. And I think it's really not going to be hard anymore for the club of Man United. And if at all he's back, <coughs> he'll be given the best of welcome by the fans at Old Trafford. And he's really going to become one of the most loved players of the club of Man United. And one will ask that will Ten Hag really start him immediately? Even if he doesn't start him immediately and Rasmus Sweden comes in through to play like 30 minutes, I think his 30 minutes on the field of play will be very, very productive to the club of Man United and his fellow players that really play around him because he gives you a lot. Plays well with his back to goal, clinical finisher, area presence is really great. Something that I'm not going to hate, obviously, utilize because I have not going to hate to see him really score headers for the club of Man United yet. He has really the potential to really score those headers if you remember the header he scores when you're playing against uh Gara, um i think it was Galatasaray the first goal it shows you how good he is when it comes at him really <clears throat> reading those crosses and running into the proper areas where those crosses are supposed to obviously find him so let's wait and see whether rasmus hoyland returns ahead of the game of everton and it looks like they were gonna have to see him in training and the other huge boost was that Ten Hag put him part of the team of Man United that traveled to Man City and was part of the squad that was there. And maybe we thought there was going to be something important or surprising or shocking for us to see him in the starting eleven. It was alongside Lisandro Martinez. So, would we also see Lisandro Martinez coming through to play? That is really going to be one of the points to really look at. Now, we go to Diego Dallo, the right back of Man United. Right now, I tell you, he might be one of the best right backs in the Premier League, stats, and how he is performing. He might be really a late karma into his potential and ceiling, but ever since he came in through uh, in 2018 when Jose Mourinho signed him, I saw a lot of potential in this guy. They signed him from FC Porto, and the rest has been history. Loaned to AC Milan, and then he returned, trusted by Raf Rangnick. Then there came in through a player called sorry, a manager called um, Eric Ten Hag, and he really considered him his best right back, and ever since then, the rest has been history. He has said, we need to adapt constantly 
and we just need to do it especially in the league like the premier league which is highly intensity which is which is high intensity with tempo and everything is the high speed and on the hardest levels so you need to be ready so for him he's always ready and he's only him bruno fernandez and ganacho that are not gonna hit obviously miss out again because of injury they're not gonna hit to get injured you know this season and when they felt like they're really out they always returned and we did the needful and um He's talking about being ready. He's always ready, and that's why the manager is going to hate to really pick him game in, game out. One of the things that Raz Marcelo is going to hate to improve this season is his crosses. His crosses are really elite, you know. Remember, he's responsible for that cross that saw Diego Dalo do that acrobatic finish when he's playing against Everton, and is going to hate to put in more and more assists this season in the Premier League. He has, I think, a total of two or three goals this season, and he's really one of those players that you'll obviously want to have in your team because of how he risks himself in the final third of the pitch he really runs very well and is press resistant he doesn't allow any plus on all player to really go past him especially when it's defending and he is a right definition of the modern right back offensively good and defensively good he added on and said this is diego dalo that Especially for a fullback, if you want to help the attack and at the same time try to be a good defender, you need energy. Do the right thing so you can be available. We have plenty of people who help me in the best condition so I can play like that. <coughs> Everyone will obviously want to see Dalo play well. I'm going to hate to see people now change their mind. I don't know how people watch the game of football. I don't really know how people watch the game of football, but how do you dare come out and really say Diego Dalo is not a perfect guy who is supposed to be playing for Man United? Look at his stats. Then two matches later, you say he has going to hit to improve. But <clears throat> I saw Dalo improve in the first season when Ten, Hag, when Ten Hag gave him a chance to play. And you remember that what really led to his really shrinking in form was all about the injury got in the World Cup. That is it. But... If it wasn't that, he had gone ahead obviously announced his arrival into the club of Man United. Even though I saw Bisaka taking on, people excited, I asked, what is Bisaka doing better than this guy? Dalo defends very well and he has some good offensive play. Bisaka defends very well. He doesn't have an offensive play. He's not a press resistant player that Dalo really is. He inverts inside very well. I talk about Dalo. Bisaka cannot do that. If you're really looking at a team that wants to be really a proactive team and possessing the game of football, you need Diego Dalo into your team because you can build from the back and the rest will be history if at all. You really have a player like him. That is all about Diego Dalo. So I think he's really one of those players that are going to hate obviously put in a lot of energy and he has going to hate to say that you need a lot of energy to balance the left back and the, sorry, the full back positions when you're attacking and defending. And he has a lot of people helping him. And the reporter's gone ahead to come out and indicated that this guy always stays onto the training ground and practices shooting and crossing. So that means he has people that are really trying to really teach him how to become a better crosser of the ball. Lastly, Shia Lacey. This is Shia Lacey is hate to make his return from injury in time for Saturday's under 18 match derby against Man City. Lacey started light training on grass in early January and has made good progress towards full fitness since. Now, if you really want to see how talented this boy is, go ahead and be watch that game. Lacey is one of those players that has gone ahead obviously put in a shift and I've gone ahead to really acknowledge what he really does as a player. I love him for what he does. He is left-footed and he has a lot of talent in him. He's one of those talents that you can obviously bet that Ten Hag is soon really getting into uh, the team of Man United. And I'm going to hate to see him sometimes training with the first team. And that is the beauty of this guy. But I really love him. Looks like United is really having very many right attacking midfielders. But Lacey is really great. The moment you saw Media being sold to... Was he sold to Atletico Madrid or what? There's certain 
La Liga team that he was sold to. It shows you that this boy is going to hit, obviously, prove that he's going to really become big. He might be another player that might make his debut for Man United next season. So, guys, your thoughts on Rasmus Hoyland expected to return as we play Everton? What do you make about it? What do you make about Diego Dalo? Talking of how he is really ready to take United over places. And remember, last season he said the group of players at Man United want to make United the best team. They want to get United back to the glory days. And what do you make about a Lacey, one of those that is really talented from the Academy of Man United? Now, I sign up for now. See you later. I plan to do a live stream later, like two hours from now. Hope you guys will be ready to obviously receive me and really have a say about what I'll be really trying to reveal to you. As players of United reportedly or allegedly turn down on Eric Ten Hag and think that he's really going to get a sack. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rokan David is my name. The Muslims Barak Laufiku. We are out for now. See you in the next story.